John Lennon circa 1969 was certainly a strange mixture. Having long since jettisoned the homespun Cynthia for the exotic and dangerous Yoko Ono, John, the alleged rebel of the group, was once again a happily married middle-class hippie. Rejecting the Tudor Kenwood for the gleaming Tittenhurst Park in Berkshire, the cantankerous beetle filled his new home with plasticine donation boxes in the form of blind children with guide dogs, white spray-painted furniture neatly cut in half, enough fur coats to clothe the bird expedition, and according to an old Hare Krishna friend of mine who lived and worked there for some time, more than one nasty hypodermic needle. His adventurous, occasionally heroin-addled mind, they say, was like a cauldron of mixed emotions on his future as a beetle, his rapidly deteriorating relationships with the other three, the near-constant business troubles at Apple, the upset over his fairly non-existent relationship with his son Julian, the constant thumps from the press and the public seeming inability to comprehend or indeed appreciate his various artistic shenanigans with Yoko. Still, John wasn't so out of it he wasn't able to originate a rather compelling personal philosophical kick in the groin to the pro-Vietnam hawks then having their wicked way with the planet in pursuit of their still fairly incomprehensible goals. When Lennon reasoned he might as well use the publicity he was bound to receive anyway as King of the Beatles to spread his message of peace on Earth, he should have been applauded rather than maligned. The fact is, taking advantage of the free airtime was not only very canny business-wise, but also extremely generous. Throughout 1969, Lennon was extremely close with Apple man Derek Taylor. In this interview, listen carefully and you'll hear both Derek and Yoko adding their two cents worth. I can never go anywhere without being attacked. And then I think, well, if you really wanted to, you could shave your hair bald, shave off your moustache and go to Egypt yeah. or India. So who are you kidding? You know, we say, well, I want to live in England because I was born here. Then I wouldn't be myself, that's the reason mm -hmm. I give. But if myself wants incognito so much, mm -hmm. myself would be that bold, shaved mm -hmm. man in the middle of India. So, so that's like losing identity too. So that's like, you know, works out two ways, doesn't it? Yeah, so the, that's where it's at, really. Of course, there's less, there isn't Beatlemania going on, and because I'm acting more naturally, whatever that is, I'm not, I don't have to keep up the, any image, you know, I mean, I can. I'm acting as an artist now, as an individual, mm. and I'm not responsible for the Beatles' image or anybody else's, and I don't have to sign autographs unless I feel like, you know, and all Even that. So they're the beginning to accept that. that, you know. There's one or two people get uptight and things like that. But I just have to stop it <laughs> because as a Beatle, it was either sign everything and be everything they wanted and always smile and always react to high and all that, or we went the other way, which is hiding and wouldn't see anybody, wouldn't see the press, kept the gates locked. Yeah. But now I do it on whim, you know, just let it roll. The only friends I got are the sort of the Beatles and the Derricks and the Neil and the Peter Brown have been with us over the years. And a few more people are picked up, you know, here and there. But they, people can be hangers on and friends, you know. I've had hangers on that have been friends that have dropped off. You know, because we didn't have enough to give each other. I must have something from a friendship, you know. And we picked up a few new ones sort of from Yoko's side of life that are so determined not to be hangers on. They don't want to know. They pretend Beetle doesn't exist. Well, <laughs> Derek sort of put in a nutshell the other day, really. He said, a good, intelligent friend, whether he worked for us or not, which he would be, you know. I mean, there's certain things I'd ask him advice on, you know and discuss with him or be pleased to see him about you know. But there's... You've got to have a hook in friendship. It's not really enough just to... There's got to be some good thing you can get going on. Yeah, when, when you're older there has to be, because in the, when you're younger all it needs is somebody to go to the pictures with, with, you know, or get pissed with. But when you're older the relationship's got to sustain through a few years, you know, that Something. I could go away for four years and come back and relate the story to Derek and there wouldn't be a big gap between us. But sort of hangers on would have lost they would 
stay at the level they were when we last had them hanging on. You know, they sort of the glory rubs off on them and they turn into sort of something or other and they go off into swinging London, you know. But I'm a sucker for people, you know. I'm not very good at I go by people's faces and if they look straight, you know, I just <laughs> believe in them and I've had a lot of bad experience like that, you know. But it hasn't hurt me too much, just sort of oh really? Yeah. Is that what they wanted? You know, and all that. And so between us, we try and watch for it. We discuss mm. everything in minute detail, you know, well, it's good about then, everybody yeah. we meet and, you know, what <laughs> do they want or they con in us? Because I've been conned all my life, you know, since I was a Beatle. When he said the, the Beatle that he went through, he, may, you know, really meant the Beatle mania, you know, era, you know. But I think everything has a natural course, you know, and when it's necessary, they exist, you know. When it's not necessary, it goes. So the fact that it's going on means that there's still that necessity. And it's good, you know, that's good. Because the Beatles are always discussing, uh, should we go on or shouldn't we? Why, what are we together for now? And when it gets down to it, I like playing rock and roll. I like making rock and roll records. Now, I have either a choice of, if I want the whole LP to myself, is to get a few musicians together. Now, I know that I've played with other musicians, just very rarely, but I've occasionally played with them. It needs some work together to get anything good going. You know, I don't like session men at all. I try not to use them. I don't like violinists or anything these days. I try not to use anybody but the Beatles. And if I wanted to make a record, I'd choose the Beatles. You know, I can say to Ringo, "Give me um, Bebopalula." You know, so therefore we've got that going. You know, and even from a commercial point, when we discuss it, we think, "Now, oh, what's the biggest selling name? Beatles or John Lennon and the Fabs?" or George Harrison and the Fabs. Which, where, where's our biggest market? Is Beatles. Who are our closest friends? Beatles. Who do we have most arguments with? Beatles. So Beatles is it, you know. Brian Epstein, though invaluable to the Beatles in the early years, was quite frankly rather a pain in the ass to the boys as time went by. This because of his unhappy homosexual relationships and losing bouts with alcohol and drugs. In this telling piece, Lennon comments on the fallout of Epi's untimely death. I don't think of him very often, you know. I mean, he's missed when we get in, when we realize we have to solve all the, think about all the business things, you know. But I'm one of those out of sight, out of mind people, really. You know. I've got a built-in resistance to sorrow, you know. I forget things the next day, which is lucky. Really I remember odd things, things from way things. back, you know, but really I've got a good sort of whatever it's called, you know, the protective. buffered protective thing in me in my mind. I just hopped into this bag Nothing with is Yoko. Is it? Mm-hmm. And it's, you know, it's always changing. So we just keep changing our bags, but if the bag gets bigger, that's the bit. That's the bit, you know. I mean, I got out of one bag, like a beetle pop bag, and she, we've said this many times, she got out of her avant garde bag, and we got into a bigger bag, and so there's more room to breathe. And so it's just keep expanding the consciousness of the bag. It's like trying to explain a flower. We know what peace is the opposite of war, you know. We're also talking about peace of mind. You know. <laughs> So it's it's a bit hard to define a flower, you know, but we all know what it is. Oh, so peace is a very uh, simple concept, isn't it? I mean, you know, if anybody who tries to intellectualize it or something, and then they might just sort of sort of deform the idea. But as long as they they're honest about it, everybody knows, you know, really. See, all we're trying to do, in a way, is to make people aware that they have the power to have peace, you know, like we have the power to prevent Britain being involved in the Nigeria Biafra war, you know, the people have the power, we put the politicians in there, but we believe the myth that's being created that we, we need these grand old men, the village elders, you know, and it's got to such a state that the village elders, like in old tribes, have got it so sewn up that nobody can get a word in, you know, but it's only a matter of us revolting without creating havoc and just changing the, the method, you know. Because if the youth are hipper than we were when, when I was a youth. <laughs> I know that just from meeting the cousins and odd youths I've come across. You know, they're much hipper than I was as a kid and I thought I was pretty hip. So 
I think there's a more of them understand it than than you imagine. It's like in the yeah. disc pole. That was an amazing thing, you know, an amazing intelligence of some of the kids analyzing or whatever of what we were doing, the Oko and I. And they were, that was 12 and 14 year olds, you know. So they're not. So the thing we're aiming at really is partly that generation, because uh, if they realize they can do it, and they can because they will be it, they will be the establishment. Then, then it's up to them, you know, and they can't sit back and blame the chief of the tribe for for attacking the next village, you know. They can't do that anymore. It's their response. It's all our responsibility, you know, and that's all we're trying to get get them hip to. Is it's like in the old, you know, all the workers pre-unions didn't believe they could ever do anything about it. It took how many hundreds of years for them to think. Now, if we all stop work, what's he going to do about it, you know? And that's what we've got to do about peace, you know, whether it's all stopping work or whatever. So if, I don't know how the original, I can't remember my history from school enough about Todd Slaughter or whatever his name was <laughs> in the 1200 who started it all, you know, but it was about 1800 before anything really happened. So maybe we're him, you know, but I hope we're not. I hope uh, Todd or whoever he was was a few years back. You know, maybe that was, what's that old guy, Russell, yes, or right. before him, maybe we're the next generation. But the thing is, it's, we're so far removed from it, we're a bit nearer with Ireland going on, you know. But apparently even in Nigeria, the people there are so sort of blase about it, they don't really feel as though they're at war, you know, it's not harming them. So it, all we're trying to do is make them aware. You, know, you really have to make them aware. All the people are dying all the time. Because you see, it might come to you, you know. That's the thing that you don't realize, you know. Like we we were saying that all all through this peace campaign, you know, like, well, it could happen to you, and you don't really feel it. Now we went through the same problem. Like we were in a car, you know. We never thought that we'd have a car crash, you know. And we had it, you know. It was a really frightening experience, and we thought, well, it can't happen to us, you know. But it did, you know. And uh, when it comes to that, you know, I mean, you know, the, the ones who die, you know, will, will have no words, you know. <laughs> so usually, I mean, usually you don't really feel the effect because the dead ones don't come back and shout, you know, <laughs> and it happened to me and it's going to happen to you too, you see. It's really very uh, scary, actually. I mean, like uh, in Biafra and all that, all these people dying every day, you know. And meanwhile, we're just sort of sitting here and, you know, Intellectualizing things. And there isn't any country that hasn't attacked somebody else, you know. I, there's very few. Exactly, exactly. There may be one or two tribes, you know, or something. Oh, so there's exactly. nobody, nobody uh, has mm -hmm. the authority as a country to talk about peace. Certainly not the English. We're in the same boat. But I mean, you know? at least this generation, our generation of Englishmen, can pass on to the next generation of Englishmen that what our fathers did was a lot of fascist killing, you know, and not to be conned by the British. Commonwealth on the Daily Express and probably the Times too. You know, all we've got to say to our kids is because all we got as kids was uh, Empire Day and uh, yeah, all that. I mean, and the Beatles played the bit British Legion. Can you bring these guys some tea as well, please? Oh, I see. But it takes a long time to say. Yeah, I'll have it at home. So there's none of us have any right to talk about peace, you know, because I've beaten people up and right, I've right. fought with Yoko, you know. <laughs> but I'm, I prefer peace, I prefer myself in a peaceful situation. Well, and I prefer my friends when they're peaceful, you know. And you've got to start somewhere, you know. Yes, That's the bit. Yes. you just got to start somewhere. Only the violent ones know the, the value of peace. You know that bit, you know. I it's mean... Yes, I mean, there's no eternity uh, unless, you know, there's death, you know. I mean, like, we die, that's why we know what eternity is, you know, what the value of eternity is. If everything is eternal, then you wouldn't have, you know, eternity. We've got to get on with it. See, you've got to do it yourself, and so have we. I mean, I'd like Jesus to come and sort it out for us, too, you know, or Buddha or somebody. I'd really like somebody to come and lead us. But the point is, there aren't any leaders leading us. So we've got to, it's like Eric Clapton I was reading about him today. He's saying all the time his groups are splitting up. And uh, it's partly because Eric likes to, Eric and Ginger need to be led. And the, the responsibility of being the leader 
is too hard for him you know but he must get it together and lead the group if he wants to be super Eric and all that because that's the only way to do it and that's how we all got to get start leading instead of just following like sheep you know we've all got to take the initiative and you know stick a fucking poster in your window or something because there comes a time you know you're lying in bed and if you think at all about Biafra or anything any of the kids reading rave or anything you think what can I do nothing you know what can you do nothing but uh, just declare yourself the first thing to do is to declare you declare it to yourself inwardly I'd like to stop it how I've got a clue what's the first thing to do tell me friend tell the next person to you I, I like I want prefer peace in the world do you and you agree on it okay what can we do let's stick a poster in our in our house window it's got to start from the roots you know like any workers movement whatever it is any movement big movement started with the people and the people have got to like just think love if there was, think peace you know that's if good. people just stood like propaganda in their windows or something it's a start to let other people know that they're not the only ones even if they can't solve the problem I can't give a, a political social e- economic answer of how to run the world without peace I know there are people that could do that I know it, it's possible you know so I'm not providing answers I'm just saying okay I've stated my case now put me a poster in the window only I happen to live in a strange world so my poster is a strange poster mm-hmm. but for kids all they have to do is to declare their faith that's the first thing and then you're out in the opening if you you've admitted that you want peace and that's the first move is because uh, until then you're being a hypocrite mm-hmm. you know and that's a relief the first time you allow yourself to say to somebody else I want peace and I'd like to try something you know and that's the first you get back you know you get it's not an always giving thing. You get back from giving your time to peace or whatever else it is. You get some relief from it. But the thing is to make normal peace, you know, and somebody's got to stick their neck out. You know, there's always somebody with the first Tony Curtis haircut. I mean, there's always... Uh, I was always the leader of my gang, you know. So maybe whoever the equivalent of me round the corner can be the first one to do that, you know. It's, uh, there's always somebody starts it, you know. So one, it's only a matter of somebody waving the flag, but you soon get following. And also we believe in things like telepathy and all that, you know. Um, just thinking about it, if everybody in the world think about it, you know, something might happen, you know. <laughs> really, it's just that. Here John explains his overall mission and the heretofore unknown Lenin philosophy of something called hair peace. Yeah, we can do it. Hello. 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 Hi. Hello. 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 Yes, Hello. thank you. Oh, hi. Hello. Hi. Hi. Hello. Very pleased to meet you. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Pleased to meet you. Hello. Hello. My name? Yes, how do you do? How do you do? How do you do? Pleased to meet you. Oh, it's a little Hello. How do you do? How do you do? <laughs> why are you uh, just, just, just sit down? Make yeah. yourself comfortable. Tell me why are you I think I'm going to be here seven days. We might just uh, change ends and look, look out there if we're going to be here. Every morning we we'll, we'll make a new set. Yeah. <laughs> Is that right? Yes. Staying in bed seven days. Uh, because uh, for peace. For peace? Yeah. Uh, it means bed peace? Yes, well, a, an event is called a peace, P-I-E-C-E, but it's a pun. And hair piece is to tell people to grow their hair for peace until we get peace, maybe. Just keep growing it, every, all the hair you have. And it's our way of protesting the violence in the world, you know? Rather than uh, marching. Violence in Vietnam and... Uh, violence and violence in London, violence in Amsterdam. And now Mr. and Mrs. John Lennon in bed together at the fabulous Hilton in the heart of swinging Amsterdam, 69. Peace to, to the whole world, but mainly uh, aimed towards the youth of the world, and especially the youth that are interested in uh, showing their opinions or having their opinions seen. And we're appealing mainly to uh, people with violent inclinations for change. Uh, we believe that... Uh, Violent change doesn't accomplish anything. Nothing uh, with not not in the long term view, because over 2,000 or 3,000 years, or however long we've been going, all the violent revolutions have yeah. come to an end, even if they've lasted for 50 or 100 years. 
and the very few people that have tried to do it our way unfortunately have been killed i.e. Jesus, Gandhi, Martin Luther King but I think possibly the edge we might have over them I don't think in terms of awareness or consciousness is particularly just the way we might escape from being killed or shot or whoever joins us in this trip our evolution is that we have a sense of humor and that uh, the worst we can do or the least we can do is make people laugh yeah. and we're willing to be the clowns of the world and if the world was a party in which it was mainly depressing or serious yeah. in one room that we're the people that come into the room and change the atmosphere of the party and make it a bit happier yeah. and uh, that's, that's... But is it the only uh, way you think life can be changed? I think because so. Because you have many things about life you see around you, you don't like, you dislike. Yes, I Can dislike. you give some examples? You say, well... well we're we're mainly anti-violence and all forms are anti-suppression. Yeah, uh, but the way people live, I mean, society, not, not war and those I think, big problems, uh, but just... A, well, the, the big problems are the only ones to handle. It's no good changing uh, the, the local post office okay. when the government is the thing that is uh, responsible for it. We're all responsible for what happens. And I think uh, to change people's minds or their attitudes to what's going on first, because, uh, and then they'll see that the, the small things like uh, society's aims in general are, yeah. are, are wrong, you know, yeah. the materialistic side of society. Is that it, we don't have to live uh, with 10 cars. There's no object in having yeah. all, all the things that we're programmed to want by government and by business. Yeah. We don't need all those things. And it's no good writing to me and say, well, you've got them. But until I, ch I or people like me change the society, I work within the framework of society and try and change it from within it or build around it yeah. rather than smash it. But, but uh, for example, there are thousands of people are, are just uh, going to an office and come home at six o'clock and eat and watch television. Yes. Now, is there a specific message for those people? Because those people are, are living on another side of, of, of society and, and I, I think it's, uh, it's, it's the biggest group. It's the biggest group, you know, but, um, well, well you're... I mean, it's easy to say, uh, well, let's say, stay in bed and be happy. It isn't easy to say. To work, no, no, you know? no, it is see, that's another thing. For instance, uh, you think that we're just, uh, we don't have to work, and etc. cetera. No, no, no. But, uh, you see, I know you work we're, hard. Yes, you're always working, yeah. and uh, there was only two weeks vacation we got, you know, and yeah. it was a matter of uh, spending that two weeks either uh, for a honeymoon, you know, complete yeah. private yeah. honeymoon, and... Uh, to donate it to the world peace, you know, and uh, actually we could uh, use this this week, you know, for much better, sort of nicer, pleasant, the yeah. way of spending it. Yes. For instance, uh, go to a, a beach or, you know, to a mountain yeah. or something like that yeah. and just sort of rest, you know. And any working class people could do what we're doing. Any working class people in this age, you know, at least have a two weeks vacation, two weeks holiday yeah. or one week holiday, you know, even office girls do. Yeah. And also, another thing is that, uh, um, the students especially, you know, who are marching, you know, yes. uh, in the street and all that, in, instead of using that particular time to march, you know, yes. they can stay in bed, of course, you know, they did have that time. Yeah. Many students have time now to... But they have reasons to demonstrate. Well, this yes, is, but we're saying demonstrate we have reasons different. To Even demonstrate, if they have yes. community bed-ins, something yeah. that, that uh, establishment won't react violently, will yes. have more effect. Because if they provoke violence in any form whatsoever, they will make more violence. And that's just a fact, action, reaction. If you, you know, if you do certain things, it will, the reaction will be violent. Yes. I mean, say, anybody can grow their hair and have a permanent living demonstration of their yes, protest of against society. Any office guy can grow his hair. Okay, he runs the risk of being thrown out of his yeah. job. But if he wants to change the world, he's got to either get in the street and protest with the students, or he's got to make some kind of protest. Mm -hmm. If he wants, he can't sit back and wait for the change. He must be part of it. Yeah. It's up to the people to make the change but themselves. But all part of the society, you know. Yes. And uh, nobody is too busy that they don't have a Sunday, you know. You can do a, a bed in or in Sundays, maybe. And also, growing hair is a more practical idea, of course, that, as John said, anybody can do anywhere, you know. Yeah. But so this, is, this, this is more or less only to open yourself for for life. Yeah. Because when I stay in yes. bed yes. and I am un unknown only to my friends, but, uh, yes. this is only for me. You know, like I, a I have but no, no, like a Daily Mirror paper or anything like yes. that. When some housewife wins the pools or yes. when some housewife does something extraordinary, like goes bald or... Yeah. 
Uh, she's news. Yeah. Now, if Mrs. Williams from Rotterdam yeah. announces that because of John Lennon and Yoko Ono's uh, event, I myself am personally staying in bed for four days on March the 5th. You're not telling me that all the press wouldn't be there? Maybe they wouldn't be there after 50 people had done it. Yeah. But uh, the initial, anybody can do it. From now on, we've, we've said, here is a way yes, of protest yes. for people who don't want to go on the streets particularly, or for people who don't want to be violent about it. Now, if any ordinary office guy or anything can do that and announce to the press all he's got to do is ring up his local paper and say you know me I'm the one that lives next to the garage I'm staying in bed for two weeks and growing my hair that paper will be there you know yes. and maybe not as many newsmen as we do but if people did it in individual cities towns or villages it would be known yes. and if they don't want to do that they can grow their hair and if they don't want to do any of that well then they'll have to wait till other people do it for them you know, but yeah. if anybody is interested can do what we're doing, you know, it's not a, a case of having money and doing it in the Hilton. This was the most effective functional yeah, way yeah, for people yeah, of our yeah, style yeah. to do it. Yeah. But I'm saying if I was a student and somebody did it, I saw somebody like me doing this, I think I could soon think of new ideas or new ways. This is just a symbolic event. Yeah. Bed, I mean, you could do it literally in bed or literally go your hair, but we're, what we're really saying is try other ways, you know. Yeah. Let's not forget about the peaceful ways of doing things because Gandhi was shot and because Martin Luther King was shot. Let's not forget what they were preaching and that they are uh, heroes of the youth as well as uh, the other heroes they have. And just remember that side of life and that everybody seems to be getting a little too serious. Yeah. You know, I'm sure the world is serious, but it's always been serious, and the problems have always been the same. They may be in different proportion now. Yeah. The problems are the same, and people are a little bit too serious, even the youth, you know. Yeah. And there is time to laugh. There's no reason. They watch TV, they read papers, they laugh. They can make use of it, you know. mm -hmm. Make use of the time if they want to do yeah. something. So uh, this, this is also a way to attack the, uh, well, certain power groups in, in, in society. Uh, or. Uh, or do you think that there must be another way to um, to change that that establishment and all all those things? Because you 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 talk mainly to to young people. Because yes. they are going to be okay. the establishment. Yeah, the okay. They are I know, the future. I know. Yes. You know what yes. is no but still in all the the other generation is still ruling things. Yes, many of course, things. Yes. But they won't. But you see, they're not going to stay long. And yeah. also, we don't believe in revolution. Yeah. We believe in evolution. You know yeah. that uh, it will change. And many people, young people especially, feel that because they're impatient. They feel, well, uh, evolution, we can't wait for evolution, you know, we have to do the revolution, and they're very impatient about it. But I think that the, because of the uh, development of the uh, communication media, you know, that the, uh, 10 years now is uh, like 100 years uh, in 19th century, you know, it yeah. goes very fast. So, uh, for instance, uh, it's possible in this age for uh, a young girl like Mary Hopkins to just uh, make it overnight all over the world, you know, it's that, it's that possible. So, uh, I think it's not going to take that much time, you know, for the idea to come across, you know. And, uh, all right, so many people in the establishment wouldn't understand it, but even among the old, older people, not uh, only younger people, but even among the older people, there are many people who hate the establishment and uh, who are really trying to change the world, you know. Yeah. And uh, those people can join us. Yeah. <laughs> you know, even 70, I mean, it doesn't matter, you know, really. Yeah. I mean, we've had lots of telegrams for people of all ages, you know, priests, I don't know, hotel owners, all sorts of people just saying, just even if they're not going to do it themselves, they're wishing us luck. And I believe the vibration they send us is effective. Yeah. I believe that there's a certain amount of people who are protecting us with their minds. There are a certain amount of people who are attacking us with their minds too, without any physical manifestation. And I believe that, I believe in those kind of vibrations too. And because we've set ourselves up in the middle of a, on the ninth floor of the world, <laughs> yeah. that uh, a lot of people in different countries say, oh yes, uh, mm -hmm. That's what I think, mm -hmm. you know, and even if they just say yes, mm -hmm. yeah. I believe that is effective. Mm -hmm. You know, as Yoko said the other day, isn't it? Uh, the fact that you cough mm -hmm. affects the room, affects the world, you know. Yeah. Yeah. And if you speak, what you say doesn't end here. Mm -hmm. I believe yeah. that the, our scientists could prove to you that the vibration went on and on infinitely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And therefore, every action you make goes on and on infinitely and has an effect. Yeah. So everything yeah, good. I mean, it can be two ways. Yes, it yes, can yes. Be two, ways two ways. So that's if you carefully think out the effects yeah. you're going to create, then there's more chance for all of us. Yeah. If you think it's hard to think out every move, but your major 
moves or your major attitudes to life yeah. will have an effect on everybody around you for, for a start and thereby on the universe. Yes. And also, you know, I think the world, especially the, I don't know why the young people are getting yeah. that way. It's very strange, but uh, it's, oh, the whole world is becoming too serious, you know, and it's very, very intense now, you see. Yeah. The tension is mounting, you know, really it's mounting something. But, uh, so for instance, uh, there are many pacifists uh, before us, you know, uh, like uh, Gandhi and so forth, and uh, many gurus uh, who meditate and just stay in the uh, mountains or something like that, you know. And uh, I think those vibrations are very important too, you know, or Martin yeah. Luther King who preached, you know, yes. and the John Kennedy who uh, did it in politics, you know, all that. And those vibrations are all very important too. But the difference between those people and us are the fact that we are funny, you see. <laughs> I mean, in other words, we are the clown, you see, and uh, I think that the... But a clown is the most human thing in, on earth. Yes. All right, it's yes, tragic, see, so it's we're not just yes, meditating on a stone, you know, yes. we're in bed, which is the most yeah. human thing you can think of, and, uh, you know, and possibly we're sending a conceptual love-making vibration to yeah. all over the world, you see. So it's not like uh, meditating with uh, just water and air in the mountains, you know. There's yeah. a big difference there, you know. Yeah. This is very human and uh, very uh, today, you know. I mean, Hilton, you know, all that. So it's funny. And the thing is, for the young people to uh, change the world, you know, they shouldn't try to change it by preaching or by politicking or by uh, being a guru in that sense, you know. I mean, everybody's a guru, but I mean, not in that sense. I mean, because we live in this age, you know. Yeah. And so uh, the thing is that uh, I you mean, have to do some, some, some no, we have TV there. and all yeah. that. You know, yeah. we can't deny the fact that, that we have TV and newspaper and all that. You right, know, right, right. and uh, uh, so it's one way to go in the mountains, and that's fine too. I mean, I'm not denying that. You know, but uh, no, why don't you do it right in your bed? You know, yes. and. Uh, uh, you can meditate right in your bed. It's that that yeah. thing, you see. And so instead of changing the world with uh, another violence, you know, yeah. in other words, uh, destroying violence with violence, yeah. you know, why don't you do it smile and laughter, you know? And that's why this uh, uh, thing that we're doing, which is like a, a, a laugh, you know, and we are being a clown, you know. Yeah. I mean, no, I mean, there isn't anybody else who's being laughed at so much these days as we are, you know, yeah. in the that sense. So, uh, I think that that's the main point, I think, that's yeah. different from the other thing. And, and uh, uh, yeah. when I say Rome, religion, uh, this, uh, all those religions are different from, from your own uh, religion. Uh, this is maybe a, a different part. Well, you see, we're not preaching a religion, you see. Uh, no, 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 I know, but yeah, I mean, so you have your religion. Yes, right? our religion is, what is, this? is based on the basic principles of Christianity, Hinduism, Buddhism, Communism, anyism that has been invented. Uh, most of them, I think, probably all of them, were invented by a man with good intentions. It's the distortion of the facts that we're against. And we're, we're oh, beautiful. Oh, I thought it was enough. It's raining. Yeah. Uh, and so we are Christians and Buddhists and communists, you know. The, 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 all the, we believe the message was the same. Uh, throughout the yeah. world, you know. But but before you 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 thought over all this, you were um, you were Catholic or? or no, I was I was. Well, we I was grown up as, as I was brought up as Church of England, you know, Church which means you lived in England. That's all, and went to the local well, I church. Well, all sorts of phases, and I'm sure John has has too, you know. Yeah. In other words, uh, this is uh, typical of this age, you see. Yeah, everybody, because uh, everybody's go through, uh, you know, that capital and uh, yeah. and the Zen Buddhism and uh, you know everything, you know. We yeah. read a lot, you know. I mean, everybody that is. So this is the age where everybody uh, gets acquainted with all sorts of isms, you know. And uh, all right, so the. The major point uh, about this, I think, is, for instance, uh, uh, John's idea is uh, this one piece called uh, Built Around It, you know, which is a, a little art piece like this, you know. Yeah. And uh, uh, I had many instruction pieces, which is uh, for other people to add on so the uh, object becomes growing, you know. But uh, they were, I don't know, I wouldn't say that they were mostly destructive, you know, but they had a certain kind of uh, tension about it, you know, that that sort of uh, becomes isolated, you know, and yeah. uh, exclude others from this piece, you know, it's that bit. But uh, John uh, made a piece, 
uh, well, he didn't make it. He picked up and just put his concept to it, probably. But the thing is, he just said, build around it, you know, yeah. which is to build many things around it, not destroy this and make it, yeah. but use this, you see, as a function and build around it, you know. Yeah. And I, I think it's typical, John, about that. But that's what we're trying to do in a way, you know. Yeah, but uh, this, this. All is connected with uh, religion. Uh, how, how, no, no, it's what, not connected what? with religion. What I'm no, no. saying is that. Uh, do you uh, use the word? Uh, do, do you use uh, use the word? Uh, um, you like to use the word uh, religion. religion no. Or no, 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 it no. Is, okay, it, so it if puts it, you in a corner. Yes, okay. yes. We, this, we don't want to be in a bag or yeah. anism. No. No. All isms we accept and the yes. basic yes. principles of all the isms. Yeah, you pick them out and you. Yeah, they're all the them. same. When you read them, they yeah. all say the same thing. You know. In other words, coexistence. You know. Yeah. I mean, once you make a statement you immediately become become uh, dangerous, you know. A statement is dangerous because uh, that immediately kills other statements, you see. In like, words, like what John said about Jesus, for instance. Did this, this put him in a corner too for, for a couple of months? Well, well he was true, misunderstood. True, but because yes, if, it, yes. if but you believe uh, in Jesus so much, you know, yeah. then you're immediately in a position to kill Buddhism yeah. or whatever, yeah. you know. That's yeah, yeah. This is what so I mean. That's very dangerous, you know. But uh, I think instead of... Uh, uh, Becoming like that, what you can do is to let all the isms co coexist, you know, and uh, and build the future around it. In a way, yeah, you know. Do you find uh, find this difficult or not? I, I think a lot of people are, are doing what we're doing. Mm -hmm. and that's it. You know that uh, are, are accepting all isms and coexistence. Yeah. And uh, I think we're, we're just saying, hello, we're, we're with you. Uh, yes, uh, yes. Maybe we can call it bedism or hairism, <laughs> you know, if you like. But nowism, <laughs> and, yeah. nowism or yeah. anything, mm -hmm. yeah. if people want to tag for it. Yeah. But, uh, no, bedism is the okay. What did you learn from your Eastern uh, adventure? <laughs> uh, I learned a bit about Hinduism, Zen. I asked yeah. Maharishi many questions because he was a good teacher. You know, yeah. I knew a lot about yeah. philosophy, which I hadn't... The education wasn't that hot, you know, it ended at 16, really. And so I learned a lot about the isms, you know. Yeah. And I've noticed the, the similarity between the Christianityism that I've yeah. been brought up with yeah. and the communism which I'd read about, etc. And uh, that taught me that, capitalism, yeah. of course, yeah. And uh, so I learned a lot there, and I learned, uh, I learned meditation was the main thing. You know, I did that. Yeah. I did need to be told how to meditate, you know, how to uh, how to relax myself. You know. Yeah, and that was. Why did you quit? Because you, I did. You, you I felt quit. You uh, I quit the ism. You quit the ism, and why was that? Because I I found myself in an ism, in yeah. another ism. Oh know? yeah. So I quit the ism, but meditation I still do. Yeah. And I still believe in it, you know. So um, it's like I still believe in the principle of Maharishiism. Yes. But the ism, I don't want to be in the group, you know. Mm. Yeah. It's just like that. Yeah, but still, all, you're married. I mean, this is an ism too. Yeah, that's a beautiful ism. Yeah. Though. <laughs> yeah. See, now, intellectually, we, we thought, oh, well, a man from the state or yeah. from the religionism yeah. gives us a piece of paper and say, yeah. you're married. Yeah. And uh, we say, oh, well, that's nowhere, intellectually. Okay. But when you're in love and emotional about it, it's beautiful and the... The ritual of getting married is a beautifulism, you know, and it. Uh, so uh, in the marriedism, I accept that, you know. Yeah, but I, but you were together for many years. For, for a year. For, for a couple of for your for a year, year yeah. before we and got now married. Now you're still together, so I mean. Uh, but there is a difference. Just uh, yeah, you feel it now. Oh yeah, yes, yes. It it's is so a very barbaric, uh, maybe yeah. ritual, you know. Yeah. But uh, I mean, we are all primitives. A lot of people do it, though. Yes, yes. yes. Yeah. And uh, and we are all primitives in a way, you know. Yeah. And primitivism is pretty good, you know. I mean, as opposed to intellectualism, you know. And uh, we are too intellectualized. Uh, I mean, this age, I think. And so intellectually, I believed in abortion. I believed everything, you know. Yeah. <laughs> all those things. But when you're in love, you see. Uh, I mean. I mean, I can't believe in abortion now. I mean, in, I mean, I, I wouldn't say I can't believe in abortion for others, etc. You know, but simply because I'm in love, I wouldn't. If I ever get conceived again, uh, you know, I don't want to kill the baby or anything. You know, that yes. just because of love. You know, so through love, you know, both both of us are fantastic cynics. And you know, well, you may, you can call us sort of academic yeah. intellectuals or whatever. Anyway, you know, I mean, we all are, you know. But uh, through love, we were able to see something beyond that, you know, which is 
sort of some some kind of primitive yeah. thinking. Yeah, but uh, I mean, it's funny that that you. Uh, you react against establishment yes, by doing yes. things like this. Yes, yes, yes. But on the other hand, you 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 stick together with them by marrying because this is what uh, establishment yeah, but does. No, yeah, no, but establishment didn't I mean, create it, that first. It, it, no. it would be more constant establishment. You say, well, we are we are in love and that's all. I mean, there's no reason for us to marry. No, no, it's but almost I'm, like this. For but we wanted to marry, you know. Yeah. I mean, we yeah, I know, I we know, know, but. <laughs> you know, that's the difference. I mean, when we say coexist, people should be allowed to marry or not marry if they want. Yeah. I, I don't think people should be ostracized for being illegitimate. But we can't do this on a, a, a uh, in Parliament alone with a with a law that says you may be homosexual, or you may uh, yes. homosexuals may get married, or you may live together and the child has all full rights. You can do that. It doesn't change people's attitudes. You know, homosexuals aren't blackmailed in England, but they still have a pretty hard time. You know, so the, you must do it by law and by changing people's minds. If you could change their mind first, I think it'd be better. Then the law wouldn't have to exist. You wouldn't need the law to tell you it was all right. But I mean, then we should be allowed to get married or not get married in equal status if we want to be married in a church or by you, mm. you know, yeah. it should maybe, should, that should be functional. If there'd been some way that we could have said, John Lennon and Yoko Ono, oh no, hereby we announce they are other. married, <laughs> we possess each other. That would be yeah. enough if the state would not take her away from me and send her back to Japan, for instance, yeah. Yeah. or uh, not allow her certain rights. As my wife, you know, there's lots of functionism in, in, uh, in the, yes. in the establishment's yes. marriage system, yes. and I don't, I, I think, okay, break it if you like, but for me, it's better to take the marriage mm -hmm. and system then break it from the inside, and then break yes, them yes. because obviously we've broken it by living together for a year, mm -hmm. yeah. conceiving and losing a child mm -hmm. before we're married, having a honeymoon before we're married, then having a honeymoon after we're married. Yeah. So we have. We've done what we, what we preach in a way is that we've um, built around mm. the, the establishment's marriage system. Mm. You know, yeah. we've declared our love and we lived together before we had divorces. We got divorces because it was yeah. functional and it was yeah, yeah. an amazing relief when we were given a divorce paper yeah. by a government servant. Mm. And he said, you are free. I say you're free. Mm. We yeah. felt freer, even yeah. though we didn't realize how free we would feel. Yeah. It was like a, a, a shadow had gone from each of our shoulders. Yeah. Mm. And thereby marriage had the same effect, you know. There was a bit more light around us after we got married. Mm. So we used the establishment system mm. and benefited by it, didn't destroy it, but we showed where we stood on it. Mm. All along, we behaved. We behaved primitively. We met each other, fell in love, moved into the cave mm. together. Yeah. And then but, a but year. But then you, you both know what marriage can mean. I yes. Mean, you were married before. Yes, yes. But I was never in love before like yeah. this. You know, there's a difference. I got married uh, for many reasons before. You know, but I've never been in love like this before. Yeah. And that's different. You know, so I, I always used to think if I ever got married, I'd never get married if I ever get out of this. You know, I'm going to be the biggest bachelor in the world. Yes. But of course, uh, when the opportunity to be a bachelor came, I didn't want it. Yeah. I found somebody that I wanted not to be a bachelor. I wanted to live with her and be married with her and have the ring. The ring yeah. is, you know, for instance, I don't have this ring now because being just altered. today you lost it's been it. older. Oh. <laughs> it's just too big for me. Okay, I'll yes. take it next. You, yeah. you know, it's too big for me. Actually, we're so busy. Right after this, we have to go back to London. You know, we don't have even time to see Poland. You know, and we have to go back right away uh, to uh, finish the Beatles record, etc. You know, so it was really uh, a matter of uh, we debated on, uh, you know, whether we should use it, use our precious vacation for this, or have just fun. You know. I mean, this is fun too for us, of course, because we feel very gratified, you know, to do this, you know, all that, and we, we get a very high, uh, I don't know, uh, excitement from it, you know. Yeah. But uh, of course, we, we have a choice of just indulging ourselves and, you know, just watching films every day or, you know, whatever, yeah. <laughs> too, so. And also, it's a bit, it's not really that hard, but it's a bit difficult to stay in one room yeah. for, you know, a whole seven days, you see. I mean, people put yeah. people in jail for that kind of thing, don't they? Yeah. You know, as punishment. So, okay. so, so you know, um, yeah. you were asking us, uh, uh, 
made me a thing about sex. But yes. I think, you know, uh, so, all right, so it's a matter of taste, you know, yeah. people. And, uh, but the, the thing that's bad is, so morally, um, there's n no such thing as bad sex or anything, you know. I mean, bad form of sex, you know. But, uh, and so anything, sadism, masochism, or anything should go, you know. But uh, the point is, uh, it's a matter of taste, and you don't really have to do it or anything if you don't want to, etc. You know. And uh, what we can do, the only thing we can do is not preach or to talk, you know, think of it or talk about it from a moral point of view, but uh, uh, create a situation where, uh, if anybody wants to, you know, indulge in any sort of uh, sexual form, I mean, they can, you know, something. In other words, a little bit more freedom. Uh, sexual freedom in society, you know. and of course we're doing that. We're trying to do that by, you know, putting out this kind of record cover, yeah. etc., and just sort of freeing people's mind, yeah. you know, about is, is this is your same feeling yeah, about sure, sex. Sure. Yes, sure, sure. I think we were uh, just in the telephone and I was talking yes. about sex. You know, as, as long as uh, I don't, it doesn't interfere coexistence. You know, I think yeah. homosexuals should be free. Mm -hmm the freer in yeah, Amsterdam, it seems, than anywhere else, and sadism and masochism, all forms of so-called perver perverse, all the right, isms, yeah. isms are okay, right, you know. as long as they don't, uh, fascism though, no, well, I don't know the basis, I, I've not read the whoever started it, I don't yeah. know what his intent was, good idea. what was it based on, yeah. you know, I, I, I don't know much about fascism yeah. except for the result, I don't know what the man who, yeah. who set out, what his thoughts were, you know, so I couldn't comment on fascism. I think as long as it doesn't interfere with other people, you know, and they should, I don't think there should be sort of sadism in the streets, unless everybody said, okay, let's have sadism in the streets, you know. I think it should be a sort of community uh, uh, allowance, you know. Of but people who want that. Yes, yes, they should uh, be allowed to do what they like within yeah. within certain, you know. Yeah, but your opinion about sex is, is different because she was talking about the communal sex, for instance. The communal sex, is, I think, it should you... be allowed if, if yes, people want yeah, to do but it. For you, know. especially. No. For me, I don't. Uh, I don't want it. Do you? No, I think I want it. You're just trying to trick trick us in. No, <laughs> no, it's not a trick. But Didn't it, I say that? I mean, no. I no, don't want communal sex for myself because no, I, I said you talked about it. You talked about it. I don't mind if there was communal sex going over there. <laughs> I, we'd watch it, you know. You'll watch it, too. Yeah, sure. But being in love is different. You get possessive, you know, and we're, yeah. we're very possessive about each other's bodies. Conceptual that's sex. That's said, yeah. Conceptual sex yeah. we'll share with the world. Yeah. But, I mean, had you approached us individually last year, <laughs> we would all have been all for orgies in the streets, yeah. you know, yeah. and I would have been there, too. Yeah. But uh, I think you should be allowed to have communal sex if you want it, if it doesn't interfere with other people, you know. Yeah. And you should, I think it, it should be allowed as long as it doesn't interfere with people, you know. You know, I, I, and if it interferes with a, a, a neighborhood that people are having community sex in a field next to somebody's house who doesn't want it, I don't think yeah. it should be allowed for that yeah. person's sake, for their sensibility. But I'm sure if they can have children's playgrounds, they could have adult sex grounds. Oh, that's your paper. Yes, Together with really? Jodie Freeberg. I don't know. I hope you mean together with Jodie Greenberg in the summer of 1967. Oh, I see. Jodie is, uh, you know, a girl who brought uh, a boyfriend with her. Yeah. Okay, do this uh, then. Do. Okay, I'm sorry. There, there were years when, when money was uh, was very important in, in, in your life, especially when you didn't have it. Yeah, I then think it, it was. Then it's always important. Yeah, it was. Uh, it was only as important as to have enough to last the week, you know. But when it, even when I earned say ten pound a week, I spent it. Yeah. Just you know, I let it go. I didn't save it or plan it. So I was always um, pretty loose, easy going with money. Uh, do you feel that that uh, a lot of people are are hooked by money in a way? Yes, you see, like they are hooked by drugs, for instance. Yeah, sure. I think people. The lots of people are addicted to money. Yeah. You know. And but it's the only. Is thing. there a way for you to uh, to explain to people how they? Get well, it's like uh, people used to ask this when we were Beatles and we'd earn yeah. money. Now we weren't saying we never wanted to earn money, but the object was to be the best rock and roll band or whatever we wanted to be at the time or be yeah. like Elvis. And then money was secondary, mm. you know. But money was like, oh, yeah, money, you know, somewhere. So we got it. And just like we'd read from other rich people saying money isn't everything, they were right, you know. Mm. It didn't do a bloody thing for you, except get you on a plane instead of a boat yeah. and, and all that and how many yeah, suits can you wear and how, how, how much food can you eat etc etc it's true mm. but when I was 16 
and people, some rich guy said, uh, it's nowhere being rich. You know, yeah, it's not I very good. Spend, you know, uh, I said, oh yeah, well you give me the money and let me find yeah. out. <laughs> yeah. So I don't preach to people, don't try and find money, get money, because I know what it's, I remember having no money, I'm thinking, well you give it me and I, if you don't want it, you know, which uh, is no good to be handed on a plate because you're the son of a rich man. And that's, that's, that's a hard, hard life to lead. You know, born with money, I think is hard, which she was. I think that's just as hard as being born without it. Because there's yeah. always a catch to it, you see. Yeah. I mean, because I myself personally didn't have money. My, my mother had some, you know. But what I mean is, that's a very uh, terrible situation because she would try to control me in many ways, you know. And you really, the fact that uh, uh, your surrounding is uh, rich or something doesn't mean anything, you know. Uh, yeah. And uh, because you lose freedom, you know. And then the thing is, uh, the, the, the terrible thing about the society is that money's, money buys certain freedom for you, you know. That's why yeah. people want money. I don't think money... Well, maybe there's some people who has uh, money fetish, you know. But aside of that, money is a concept, concept for freedom, you know. You get a ticket for freedom, you know, with money, yeah. you see. But the thing is, in my case, you see, uh, when I was struggling in New York and all that on my own, you see, uh, all right, I mean, sure, money is uh, power, you know. And the thing is, I, I had to work uh, eight or nine days, uh, uh, eight or nine hours a day or something. Then I'd be so tired, I couldn't even do my work, you know. Yeah. I, I couldn't communicate my work, even I think of the idea, etc. Yeah. And so, sure, I knew about the, uh, uh, what is it, the value of money, probably, you know. But at, uh, I just, maybe I was awkward, you know. It's just being awkward, but I couldn't change my work, you know, to suit it so that it would bring money to me, you know. So my work, I knew that my work would never bring money, you know. About the only thing that dwarfed John and Yoko's unparalleled PR in 69 was America's landing on the moon. Still, the Lennons managed to edge their way into even this big story with these comments. I was just thinking, oh, I hope the Americans are not going to start uh, getting aggressive again and feel imperialistic about this event and uh, make a colony out of the moon, <laughs> which they usually do, you know, just make a colony out of anything that they can lay hands on. And that's one concern. And the other was, uh, I thought, uh, oh, well, maybe, you know, um, something interesting might happen. You know. But I mean, not to that sort of, it's not like a, a fantastic dimensional change. You know, it was that. That, that was the greatest fear I had about, oh, are they going to colonize again? Are they going to start getting aggressive again? Oh, the, the, the positive is, you know, that, that's not the word for it really, but I mean, the other side of the feeling was, okay, so America at least was uh, still together enough to do that, you know, because I mean, I, I mean the States doesn't have much reputation now to, of being together, you know, but maybe this was just another aggressiveness on their part, you know, they might use this immediately to, you know, their propaganda and all that. So that's here, you know. It's uh, done them good politically, and because of the fear that the Americans had that the Russians would take mm -hmm. it and bomb them, and the vice versa. It's just all that. Isn't so it? I was hoping really they would have both landed there at the same time, you know. They've been planning it since they got rockets from the Germans, haven't they? We all have dreams about going somewhere, etc., you know, I mean, the stars and the moons and all that. But I mean, nothing is really going to be practically done unless some scheme is really pushed, you know, especially uh, in America. I mean, I'm sure that, you know, there was a, a big government push, you know, behind it. So what do you expect? It was, it was verified by what well, the Kennedys or the Johnson said, okay, let's, let's really push it. And they really yeah. pushed it. And they had to sort of come up with the goods within so many months, and they did, you know. So it's just a matter of them all deciding in America, the whole nation, really, yeah, let's do it, and they did it. So, oh, yes, it's a well, you thought of it because you read all the science fiction books. And yes, yeah. all the children dream about, isn't it? I mean, yeah. the moon and all that, so... Of yeah. course, I mean, the government didn't think about it. I mean, it's, it's the children who thought of it, you know, before the government, you know. Jeffrey Giuliano is the author of some 30 internationally best-selling books on the Beatles, John Lennon, and other iconic musicians of the 1960s. In 2006, his book, Paint It Black, The Murder of Brian Jones, was made into a film by Stephen Woolley and Nick Powell entitled Stoned, The Wild and Wicked World of Brian Jones.
it remains a cult classic and the only film bio of the Rolling Stones. Giuliano is also a veteran journalist, having written for dozens of high-profile newspapers and magazines, including The Sunday People, The Daily Mail, The News of the World, The Mail on Sunday, Playgirl, and Rolling Stone. A noted film actor, Giuliano starred in such movies as Vikingdom, Scorpion King 3, Jules Verne's The Mysterious Island, The Fifth Execution, Far Cry 3, Fire Fire Desire, among many. In addition, he hosted the long-running North American syndicated radio series, Jeffrey Giuliano's Roots of Rock, for five years, as well as pioneering the audiobook industry in the 1990s by authoring, narrating, and producing over 250 original, non-book-based, interview-driven productions. Giuliano's publishers included Random House, HarperCollins, Delta Entertainment, Dirk and Hayes, Playaway Audio, Speechworks, and B&B Audio, among dozens more internationally. In 1998, Random House acquired his firm Tribute Audio, for which Giuliano acted as CEO and publisher for five years. His best-selling audiobook, That Fateful Night, True Stories of Titanic Survivors in Their Own Words, was nominated for a Grammy. In 2014, Jeffrey Giuliano founded Icon Editions and G2 Media Arts to market his updated works as well as publish new projects. As a visual artist, Jeffrey has been showing in galleries across America since 1977, garnering impressive reviews. His first professional assignment was designing several T-shirts for The Who's Pete Townsend in 1976. Jeffrey also designed and illustrated many of his original rock biographies for the biggest publishers in the world from 1984 to 2006, as well as designing for his pioneering record label, Samba Records, in the mid-1990s. From 2006 to 2011, Jeffrey was also the primary designer for the French fashion house Cotai. When Giuliano first conceived of creating his own literary imprint, Icon Editions, he became responsible for illustrating and designing 35 book covers, several hundred CDs, DVDs, as well as dozens of promotional posters, and eventually, an entire collection of exclusive fashion and art. The expansive design by Giuliano brand grew out of Jeffrey's impressive commitment to the arts and is the culmination of a lifetime's work by an extraordinarily talented and determined Renaissance man.